There he is. How's the big fella? How you doing? Hey, big boy. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad, boy. Not too bad. What's happening? What you up to? Yeah, just chilling, eh? Normal day, yeah, in South Africa, bro. Um, nothing much. Lockdown, lockdown vibes. That's it. Eh? Not much that we can be doing at the moment. It's rough, man. Hold on, boy. Sorry. Let me just yeah, um, fix my volume. It's just uh, cool, bro. No there we go. That should be better. Yeah. So, what's life been up? To? What's been life been like in uh, isolation, man? You've um, obviously been chilling at home, not doing much, eh? Yeah, not much, bro. Just trying to keep fit and um, stay positive, I guess. It's quite um, hectic times there in South Africa. I know things are quite better there in, in the UK with regards to sort of getting around and exercising. I mean, we've only got a time period of six to nine, so it's pretty hectic in that regard. But um, yeah, bro, it's actually it's, it's quite nice to be at home and stuff and, and be with the family and all that. So yeah. No, I can imagine, man. Yeah, like like you said, you must be. I mean, in South Africa alone, you must be on the road all the time. It's a big country and playing against all the different franchises. You're obviously kind of going to all different parts of the country. So it's, I guess it is quite nice sometimes to just chill at home with the family. And, and are you still living with your parents then? Or are you still based? Yeah, yeah. I'm still with my parents. Eh? So, yeah, it's, it's been nice to be with them. I think, you know, you cherish these times because I know after lockdown, it's going to be quite hectic again. Um, you know, during the season, I'm... I'm hardly home, so you know now that I'm home and, and and being with them, it's it's been really cool. Yeah, no, awesome, bro. That's yeah. I guess that that's important as well, just to kind of have that, you know, um, as part of your kind of development in cricket as well. Just being close to your family, you don't want to just be kind of like away all the time. Just going from growing up at home basically, and then all of a sudden jumping into a career where you're barely spending any time at home. That must be pretty kind of challenging in its own, but um. Yeah, I know. Awesome time there. Obviously, not an awesome time worldwide, but awesome bit of time to spend, uh, you know, time with the the family and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, just um, obviously, awesome having you on here today, and I think um, great opportunity for uh, for young cricketers out there to to kind of get an insight into your career and how you've um, managed to live a successful career up to date. Uh, only twenty one years old, so still really really young, still a little young little baby there. Um, but yeah, obviously, packed with loads of experience. You've uh, you know, you play crickets in all parts of the world, so you've, you've been able to kind of get the opportunity to travel and play with your crickets, which is awesome, and then also played at a, a really, really competitive level and a high level, um, which is, is something that I want to touch on today. Um, but just starting with uh, where you and I obviously met, um, you know, back when you were 16, I believe, uh, with the Warriors on a 19 side. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, 16. that in its own just pretty much says a lot. Um, playing as a 16-year-old in a you know, on a 19 side, I remember hearing lots about Matthew Bretzky, just word of mouth kind of thing. Um, went to a, a very big school, Gray High School. And uh, yeah, it was just uh, awesome to kind of, you know, share that opportunity with you now that you're playing a very, obviously, high standard and getting to open the batting with you, which was awesome. And, and kind of being exposed to, to someone that's obviously played at a very, very high level. And you could tell you were almost on that route uh, at that age, which is probably hard to say, but there was definitely something there that um, a lot of people did recognize. And just, just with that, um, from what, what I picked up, um, just sharing that kind of week with you, um, there was a, a really kind of important uh, moment where I think we were playing against the Dolphins um, in, in the first day of the Cubs week. And um, I'm not sure who was bowling. It could have been Zuma or a very good bowler. I don't know who it was. Whoever it was was obviously a decent bowler. And I remember, I think they were giving you some stick for being a youngster, whatever the case was. And I was just standing on the non-strikers listening to this. And then um, next thing you know, I think you've, I don't, you've crashed a ball through the covers or something and you've pretty much told them to go fetch. I, I don't know exactly what it was, yeah. but straight away I, I could tell that's the kind of character that we're dealing with here, you know, packed with confidence. Um, and it just came out in the way that you batted as well, which was really, really cool. And that's a big topic that I want to kind of touch on later in this interview, just the whole confidence and, and how you kind of control your emotions and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, that, that was awesome, man. That was, uh, that was quality and, and quite like uh, fresh to see for a youngster to just tell a, a 19-year-old to go fetch it after just punishing him. But um, Yeah, no, gee, I remember that day, bro. Like, folks were giving me a lot of stick that I'm arrogant and all, all this all this kind of stuff um and i think like from a young age that sort of sort of motivated me to just like you know show them you know i can i, I belong at that level i think it started when i when i sort of got selected for gray half first team in grade nine and, and and guys were like you know who is this guy why why is he playing and yeah it's it's probably it triggered things from there to just you know prove people wrong and and you know go out there and just 
do the job. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it for it. And yeah, going back to, um, you know, school days, uh, obviously Gray, Gray High, for those that don't know, is obviously a very um, big school and it's got a very good reputation for the sporting kind of side of things. And I think cricket in particular, would you would you say Gray is probably strongest for its crickets or is there another sport that's... I think it, it differs every year, to be honest. For um, I think they definitely take their, their rugby more serious than cricket. Um, I just think genuinely in South Africa, rugby is probably the, the biggest sport. So um, that's understandable. But I know over the last recent years, Gray's been, been right up there with, with their cricket. So, yeah, it's it's quite evenly matched. So I'm not, I'm not too sure which, which one to side with. Yeah. Yeah. So just doing a, a bit of research, 17 centuries for, for Gray first team? 18. Yeah, let's get that straight. 18. 18. Jeepers, yeah. bud. <laughs> so there's, um, there's obviously quite a, a decent record. Um, and then over 5,000 runs, I believe, as well in total. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure about that. Um, you would probably know more. I'm, uh, I just know about the centuries. So, yeah, that, that was quite an awesome, awesome thing. I think I had like six in, in total when I was going into matric. So that that last matric year was magical, magical. Yeah. That's where you cashed, you know. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's impressive, man. I mean, just for for kind of you know to score eighteen centuries for for a school and like a, I mean, let's just use my school for example, not a very well known school, but that would have just been mind blowing. And and to do it at a school like Grey High, which is you know massive, the likes of Wayne Ponnell, Johan Boerta. Um, big names have come through there. Obviously, the Pollock brothers as well. Um, yep. Yeah, that's an incredible achievement. And and I guess from doing that, you obviously straight away got a lot of kind of attention and a lot of expectation put on your shoulders from people. Um, how how did you go about dealing with that? Because obviously, as, as a youngster, being 16 years old, you know, or even younger, when you started pretty much making a name for yourself, scoring hundreds for the first team, how did you kind of deal with this pressure? And And just how did you kind of... What was your your thought process in in trying to kind of keep everyone happy with uh, with what you were doing and and uh, trying to keep everyone kind of on board with what Matthew Bresky was to become? Yeah, I think that's that's a good question, bro. And I think expectation in my career has played a huge role. Um, ever since young, there's been expectation on me to be something. So you know, I've I've sort of dealt with it in many ways, in good and bad. Um, you know, I went, when I was in middle of grade 10, I made the S under 19 side and, you know, just purely on potential, I hadn't done much um, and I did all right. And then I didn't get picked for the, the next series. Um, and it was just like, I, you know, it, it boggled me. So, you know, coming back from that and then sort of proving people wrong and, and scoring those 12 centuries in that matric year sort of set me up for my career to... You know, you know, I can do it. I can bounce back from these um, disappointments. Um, and then coming out of school, massive expectation on me to to be something. And you know, I guess I've dealt with it in a good way and a bad way. Um, but yeah, it's at the end of the day, I think expectations a bit of a an illusion, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, it's. It's purely what you make of it, what you, what you think of what people want you to do. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people want you to do. It's about what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, bro, it's, it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster. Um, but, you know, every year you get better at dealing with those things. And I guess it's, it's part of professional sport to deal with those, those um, expectation, expectations. Yeah, no, I guess it's, it's what you kind of, it's how you interpret it as well. Um, and that again it comes yeah. down to what I was going to bring up later with the with the whole confidence and um, kind of controlling your emotions and choosing what you hear and kind of leaving out what you don't want to hear. I think that that plays a big and important role as well. And then just with um, I know you just briefly mentioned now with the South African under nineteen side. When did you first get involved with that? Because obviously that's a massive step and that's any schoolboy's kind of dream. You know that's that's the the pinnacle of a, a schoolboy cricketer to represent their under nineteen national side. Um, so. How did that first come about? You know, did you could you kind of tell that it was coming, or was it a, a shock surprise to you? How did it all kind of pan out for you? 
Yeah, it's, uh, you sort of go through the, the national camps and stuff and you sort of get a feel of where you are. And um, I don't think it was a shock, um, but it was, you know, it was a great honor. And I think that's, that's the stepping stone to realizing that, you know, this could become something real. Um, so I got the, the call up in the middle of a series against Bangladesh when I was 16. Um, did all right, got a got a 60 and a, a 20, but nothing special. Um, and then I was left out for like a year out of all those series. Um, just I didn't do much at, at the national weeks. Um, and that, like I said earlier, it, um, it, it drove me to sort of just prove people wrong. Um, and then, you know, I had a really good Coke week and stuff and, you know, the rest is his history. I, I made this in the 19, went to the World Cup and, yeah, it was really good, good, good memories. Eh? Is that like the first kind of moment you could tell that, you know, this is, this is potentially something that I kind of want to make a, a full-time career out of? Um, obviously a massive step. Yeah, I don't think it's, to be honest, it's, even if I didn't make that SN19 side, it was... I was always going to push to be a pro. Um, it wasn't necessarily a step that should now I can do it. I, I always knew I could go all the way, whether it was SN19 or not. It was always my dream. So um, it definitely gave me a bit more confidence that I can yeah. actually do it. But you know, it was it was always there to to do it. Yeah. No. Wow, well, man. That's really really impressive. Again, and looking at your stats just on that SN19 level. Um, scored over a thousand runs. I think the third all-time leading run scorer for a South African on nineteen player. Um, only I think thirty odd runs behind um, Reynard van Tonda, I believe. And then obviously Quinton de Kock was the the one above that. So again, massive names up there, um, and you're competing with them. And I think you played a hell of a lot less games than most of those boys as well. Um, so yeah, that that must have been pretty incredible as well. And I guess with um, it's almost I think you had five. Did you score five out of nineteen hundreds? Was it? I think it was four. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Think, yeah. So it was. It was almost like getting that first hundred out of the way, and then it was almost like you, you yeah, felt more settled in um, because you you were there for a couple a couple of years, obviously. Um, so yeah. So like I said, I played since I was sixteen, and then yeah. got into the side again when I was eighteen, I think. Um, and then you know when you get that first hundred out of the way, it sort of you know gives you the confidence to just carry on going. Um, yeah. I think that's. With anything in life, bro, it's, you know, when you have that confidence to just, to do it and you've done it before, you know, nothing's really stopping you. Yeah. No, that's awesome, bro. 400 as well. Incredible. And then just um, with the SN19 side, you, you must have done a bit of a few tours, you know, around the, I think you guys went yeah. to West Indies, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, West Indies came to Sorry, yes, to us. yes. Okay. Um, and where else have you been? So I've been to the the World Cup was in New Zealand, which yes, was yeah. unbelievable. Um, and then I've obviously, you know, been to the UK and Sri Lanka with the with the National Academy. But with under 19s, we played most of our series locally. Um, so yeah, yeah, oh decent, bro. So you you've been exposed to a couple of nations as well, just yeah, diff different conditions, bro, and just learning the way those guys approach their cricket and appreciate their cricket is is quite next level. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's quite interesting, and again, an awesome opportunity for a young cricketer to kind of be exposed to different conditions and different um, kind of players as well, and how they go about their game. Um, you know, that must be a massive learning point for you, um, and also just kind of not not only experience in terms of cricket. You know, being able to travel the world at such a young age, you've probably grown as a person as well, if if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, hundred um, percent, and I think I was watching one of your videos with Nick Compton. Yep. Um, and how he said he uses cricket to to a vehicle to travel, and I mean that related with me so much. You know, I've seen so many places and different people because of the game. It's um, it's awesome, and you know their perspective on life is so different to ours. Um, I know the people in India, they love cricket and and going there and seeing how they appreciate the game is is awesome. It's, yeah, it's quite different. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a great opportunity. And then, um, just fast forwarding a little bit after the SN19 campaign that you had, you um, you signed your first franchise, or you you probably started playing a little bit of semi pro cricket first for Eastern Province. Yeah. So I played a couple of games. Yeah. So I signed an EP contract straight out of school, um, and then a year later I signed with the Warriors. So. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 
And was there any kind of um, threats from other, not threats, but any offers from any other franchises to try and grab you first before signing with the Warriors? Or was it just uh, Warriors there, I'm going straight away? There was there was interest um, straight out of school, um, but obviously I'm a homeboy, so you know um, it was sort of fitting to just start my career off at the Warriors. You know, yeah, no, yeah, I think you picked well, man. Yeah, it seems like a good <laughs> setup over there, and obviously a good place to live as well, PE, and obviously being close to yeah. home as well. It's a no-brainer, I guess. Hundred percent, bro. Yeah, no, fantastic, man. So. Leading on to what I really want to talk about with you, and I think it's um, you're the perfect person to talk about it with. So, as I said earlier, having watched you play and having kind of seen the way you bat, a very confident way of batting, um, how do you kind of control those emotions? Because I know opening the batting, that's what you do. You're, a, you're an opening batter. Um, I know you used to have the gloves, but you don't, you don't keep as much as you used to. So having that added pressure of just being an opening batter, there's more chance of, well, there's, there's probably more chance to being exposed to failure than there is for a middle order batter, for example. And then likewise for a bowler. So I think straight away, you know, you're going to have a lot of up and downs in your career just being an opening batter. There's going to be lots of games where you get a good ball first up and you don't score many runs. And then that's it for you, basically, for the game. So I think this is what makes it or breaks it for a lot of people, the ability to control your emotions. So to be level-headed throughout, and also the ability to kind of use your confidence and your self-confidence to kind of avoid any feelings of anxiety, um, self-doubt, all that kind of stuff. So how do you naturally go about uh, an innings, for example? So two days for a game, you're preparing, obviously. Um, how, what, is your, what are your thought processes to try and keep you level-headed and keep you motivated and confident, knowing that you are going to succeed? Yeah, that's um, a good question. I think Going back to the anxiety and stuff, I think it's it's very natural to have anxiety before a game and think, you know, what if this doesn't happen? Um, but it's about controlling those those thoughts and and putting them into into practice. I believe when I practice really hard, I, I sort of get into a bent, better mental state. I know a lot of guys don't like to hit a lot of balls. I, I like to hit a lot of balls. It gives me a lot of confidence. Um, but yeah, I think. You know, over the years, I've sort of developed a, a routine going into games, um, doing the same thing because that sort of gets your mind stable, um, if that makes sense. Because you know, if you if you're doing different things every time, it's you you sort of all over the place. You can you know, you wake up one day and you're feeling high, and then you low. So you know, it's about controlling that and then getting into a routine. And I think I've learned that from a lot of the older players. Um, playing with them because obviously they've been through what I've been through, the highs and lows and you sort of don't understand your game yet um, as a youngster, 21 year old um, so yeah, you know, you get better at that um, and like I said, a routine is, is probably the one thing for me that I need to have um, you know, sort of breakfast, warm up um, putting on my equipment the same way every time, that, that sort of gets me into the, the right mental mental space okay so that's almost like your focus in a way to do to keep that routine that's just how you kind of stay yeah. on track it's, kind of, it's like little wins to be honest for like you know if i can if i can train well the day before or if i don't train well i need to find a way to i'll go the day um the, in the morning and hit and hit balls and and try try get into a better mental state um you know obviously i've had some practices where i've trained really badly but you know you've got to find a way to get in the right mental state um in the game and i think that's that's the most important thing um yeah okay that's interesting and then with um you've obviously got a lot of voices in your head as well with you know all sorts of you've you played a lot of cricket and put different teams and lots of coaches that you've obviously gone through and um people trying to give you advice here and there is there is there one person in particular that you'd or a couple of people that you'd, you'd kind of uh go towards if you are looking for Kind of someone to speak to, uh, advice, almost like a mentor role. Is there is there any kind of mentors in your in your life and your career that will help you keep you kind of focused and and confident? There's there's been a few. Um, I think I'm gonna be careful. Be careful what I say here because my interview I did two days ago. I didn't mention some people and they they gave me a bit of stick for it. So um, yeah, I think you know. Your support structure is huge. Um, your family, your friends, and stuff. 
um, because you know I've my first year and a half out of school was really tough. I didn't know where, you know, like I, like we spoke about earlier, the the expectations on you to sort of just go and be this amazing thing, um, and you sort of listen to them and you think, okay, well now I need to go score five hundreds in my first ten first class games, but it just doesn't work like that. You know, it's it's about controlling those thoughts, and I think. To be honest, those expectations overtook me in, in my first year and a half um, out of school. I was mentally shot. Um, but, you know, I've sort of now gained more experience and now I'm learning how to deal with that. Um, I've got a lot better that, you know, my mental space now is far better than it was a year ago. Um, you know, and that's just with learning and, and understanding and you sort of, Letting failure happen, understanding that failure happens, you know, it just, it's a part of the game. And um, yeah, those controlling those thoughts are important because I know when I go out to bat, some days I'm not thinking about anything. And some days I'm like, I can't even hold the bat. I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's okay to have as well. You know, the best have that. And I've read KP's book and he he speaks about going out there and not knowing which, which side of the bat to hold, you know, so... I think it's just about dealing with that. Um, and yeah, you get better and, and you learn on the job. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, um, it's, it's quite interesting how you look at younger cricketers, um, you know, 12, 13, 14 year olds. And um, it's I mean, it's common in the UK where uh, after a bad performance, it's, it's the end of the world. You know, it's disaster. Yeah. You don't get runs one day. I hate cricket, I'm over it. And um, it's one of those games that can really play with you mentally. Um, so would you, I, I know what you just said now in terms of trying to be level-headed and, and you've got to expect that you know, failures will come about and that's, that's, that's why, the way you learn. But um, just for a, for a young cricketer, I think it's important, I'm sure you'll agree with me, that when looking up to the likes of yourself, you know, who's played at a very high level, um, you know, you, you also get, you know, ducks and low scores and all that kind of thing. So I think young children and young cricketers specifically need to understand and realise that that's just all part of the game and all part of a career and a, a part of a learning process as well. And um, would you give them any advice in terms of, you know, almost it, it's okay to to kind of um, to fail on a regular occasion? Would you would you pretty much tell, you know, young cricketers that, that you know, don't worry about it, it's it's just part of the game or...? Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Um, and I think the sooner they can learn that, the better they're going to be. That's that's the ultimate. Um, because yeah, I mean, all these pros talk about how they deal with failure, and some guys don't deal deal with it well, and they they fall off the the circuit very quickly. Um, so yeah, I was going to say something now. I just forgot about what I was going to say because I'm reading the comments here. Um, and yeah, yeah. So sorry, I've got it now. Right. Um, I think you know, cricket is. It's it, at the end of the day, it's just a game. Bro. Like, there's so much more to cricket than you know, getting a hundred or yeah, getting a duck. It's just it's you, there's life outside of cricket, and I think the sooner you realise that, then the easier it's going to be. And sort of just leave your leave your cricket at cricket, and when you come home, sort of just be happy because um, I know I've sort of brought my, my cricket back home and I'm not happy when I haven't done well and I'm only happy when I score runs and that's the wrong way to look at it because ultimately it's going to drive you insane and I think I mean I, I was reading something on Facebook the other day I think like cricket is the most suicidal sport in the world like it's just a mentally it kills you um, so yeah it's hectic yeah that makes a lot of sense and I think um as well, this is why South Africa's, I think South African school sports are so successful and you get a lot of young, really young, good athletes that come out of South Africa. It's because there's a, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a kind of variety of sports being played. It's not like youngsters will focus only on one particular sport growing up and that's the be all and end all. Um, so like yourself, you played a lot of rugby when you were at Gray. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's important to have that balance, isn't it? You know, to be able to play different sports, just to take, like you said, take your mind away from the game. And uh, did, that, did that help you? Yeah, definitely. And I wish I played more rugby. You know, I was sort of after grade 10, I just thought I'm going to focus on cricket. And, you know, I, I mean, I wish I played more rugby because it was so much fun and it took my mind away from cricket, you know. 
Um, and I think it's so important to have something that gets your mind away from cricket. Um, yeah. Even in the professional yeah. sports, if you study or you, you read or you, you have something to get away from the game, I think it's probably one of the most important things because it, it literally can then drive you um, insane. Yeah. Yeah, I know massively, bro. No, that's, um, you know, South Africa is fantastic. I mean, we're just like lucky to have the weather and everything as well to be able to do, you know, things like that. But that's that's one the one difference I've noticed having lived in South Africa and played cricket there and then come over here and and coaching young cricketers. It's um, it's almost like a one-way road. You're a cricketer yeah. or you're not a cricketer. And I think it's important to, you, you don't find that out until you're older. Like you said, you know, you, you only really clicked when you were, well, you were probably younger than most people in terms of knowing that you wanted to play cricket for a career. Yeah. But most people only click at the, the age of 18, I'd say, you know, when they Definitely. when they first make the South African 19 side, for example, that's when it first kind of comes to them. So I think it's important for, um, for any kids that are listening now or any parents that uh, kids just play a variety of sport, don't force them and don't kind of push them into one corner and, and focus only on rugby or cricket. Just make sure that they're exposed to everything because they're still learning, they still want to know and kind of find what suits them best. Um, so it's important to just be uh, really kind of flexible with that kind of stuff. And then going forward, uh, Bresky, you've um, you know, you've played in the MSL, which is a new competition form in South Africa, similar to, uh, I wouldn't quite put it on the pedestal of an IPL, but you do get the overseas pros and stuff coming. And I think yeah. it's going towards that direction, isn't it? I mean, you, you'd be able to tell us more about it. I hope so. Um, I think the last two editions have been extremely successful. Uh, the crowds have come out. The the overseas players have been seriously quality, um, and I think it can only do good for our game. Yeah, in South Africa, it's you know playing with the likes of Jason Roy, Ben Dunk, and all, all these big guns. You you learn so much from them, um, and going back to expectation and dealing with failure you see how these guys deal deal with failure yeah. um, and how it gets to them and seeing that they are only human you know um, and they, they, when they fail twice in a row they they feeling the pressure they they don't know what to do they don't know how you know when their next run is going to come and that's okay but it's about getting back to the process um, but yeah back onto the MSR I think it's it's a serious competition serious competition um, and I hope you know, going forward, it, it can grow and CSA look after it because I think it's a great model for, for them. Yeah, I know. I think it's only going to grow cricket in South Africa as well, giving those youngsters exposure. So I know you had a couple of really good innings, um, you know, playing in the, the MSL and that's that's fantastic. And you never know what comes from that kind of stuff. Um, you know, IPL contracts, all that kind of stuff it becomes a possibility because you're getting exposed on the international level, playing with the likes of Jason Roy. Ben Dunk, who do this for a living, literally play 20 cricket, yeah. 20, 20 cricket all around the world. And um, from those two as well, because those would have been your overseas, that's the Nelson Mandela Bay Giants, right? Those two alone. Yeah. 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 So what was that like? I mean, first of all, learning from them mentally. Uh, you touched on it a little bit as well, that you know, failure is part of the game and all that kind of stuff. But was there a few things that they taught you in terms of your own game that you didn't realize you had? So any shots in particular or... Um, any kind of approaches to your innings? Was there any advice that they gave your... Um, I don't think necessarily shots. I think probably mindset was yep. was more from, from them. Um, you know, Ben Dunk, he was the leading run scorer. So you learn a lot from the way he goes about his business. And he sort of, both of them, Jason as well, um, when they score, they leave it. It's done. It's about the next game. Um, and the the ability to keep keep their their mind clear is is probably one thing I could take from them. Um, I think that's really important, especially playing in those high intensity games. Yeah, you know, a lot is going around. The crowd is 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 going hectic and whatever. So, keeping your mind clear and just watching the ball is is probably something I really took from them. And it's a cliche, watch the ball, but you don't actually understand how important it is in those situations to really watch the ball. Um, so yeah, for for any young guys watching, you know that's it's the simplest advice, but it's the most important advice you know any any person can give you. Yeah, and are you still in touch with these boys? Are you still kind of keeping contact with them and you know messages here? Yeah, and there? I mean we, we send a message every now and then. Um, you know they're obviously really busy, and now they're now in lockdown, so they they're chilling a bit. Yeah. Um, but you know I hope that those two. You come back to the, the Giants and I get picked up again because, you know, it was great fun on the field and off the field. Um, yeah, all the really good guys. Yeah, I know. That's quality, man. And then just for your kind of future, obviously you can't 
look into the future. But um, look, there's no doubt about it. There is expectation on your shoulders. Just literally looking through all the comments here, bro. <laughs> like, you yeah. are a very uh, popular man. And, um, you know, the, the ultimate goal for you is to, to make it all the way to play for the Pro Tours one day. Definitely, bro. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's every kid's dream to to play for the pro tiers but i mean that's not necessarily a, a given that you're going to play it's you got to earn that that sort of um it was um there. it was really interesting so when I, I was back in southwestern districts and we had andrea agathagalo yep playing for us and he he had just come out of um retirement because i think he retired for two years and he was playing some club cricket in pretoria and i think he got a couple of hundreds in club crickets and then we picked him up SWD picked him up gave him a contract and then um I remember he, for the first three games he came back, I'm pretty sure he went 100, 100, 100. And he got a big 100 against Easterns as well. And um, straight away, I remember An Andy Moles was our coach at the time. And um, he was telling us that he was getting calls from Nicky Boyer, from the uh, the Knights, and just all sorts of uh, different franchises, just wanting to know more about Aggers. And um, he, he spoke to us after that day and he said, look, boys, cricket is one of those games, it takes you know, a couple of innings and straight away, you know, it can change your career. Um, so you're only one or two big scores away from, you know, a, a contract being offered to you and um, playing at a higher level. And, and how true do you think that is? Do you think it's only a couple of steps away from from where you can just elevate your game and play at that next level? Does it work like that, you reckon? I think it does. Um, I think for for 80% of the players, it works like that. For the unlucky 20% it doesn't, you know, they, they put in performances day in and day out and they still don't get recognition. Um, it's just, that's how the game works. The the sort of the hierarchy, people look for certain types of players and you, you either earmarked or you're not. Um, but then you get, out of that 20%, you do get some players that come through, like a guy like Ra Rassi funded this and you just came back in, in late in his career. Um, but definitely, I think, you know, if you score some runs in front of the right eyes um your your career sort of your your life changes to be honest um uh, and i think it's it's all about being in the right place at the right time and that's yeah so true what you said yeah that's it i guess um minus Labashan, perfect example you know came in due to injury 100%. and now the guy is yeah. arguably one of the best batters in the world um, and and if you asked him that 12 months ago, he would have, I mean, I've listened to a couple of interviews of him and he said he would have never expected that, but now he's one of the best in the world. Um, so yeah, it's it's just hectic how this game works. It's it's such a funny game. Yeah, it's just one of those where you've almost got to take the opportunity when it comes out, eh? when it's thrown at you, yeah. take with both hands and then just kind of let nature take its course, which is, um, yeah. yeah, I guess, you know, this time next year, I could be uh, talking to you and you playing for, you know, the Pro who, who knows, you know, these things are possible. I, I mean, I could, you could be talking to me and I, I might not be playing cricket anymore, you know, so it's just like, things happen. You, know, you never know. You can, it's... No, 100% it's, for real. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's exciting stuff. And then, obviously, with, um, you know, your kind of uh, attributes as a cricketer, right-handed opening batter, uh, hard-hitting, and then wicket-keeping. So what, what's going on with the keeping at the moment? Because I know back at um you know schoolboy level and and i'm not sure if you did it with that i think you did it a little bit with the santa 19 side uh you you had the gloves so so what's the what's the future with that yeah i think i get asked this this question so many times um but i, I would love to get back into keeping i think it's i've done it since i was under 10 and you know it sort of drifted off because it was hard work um and i think you have to want to keep keeping is one of those things where if you don't want to keep you're not going to keep, you're not going to succeed at it. Um, I was supposed to keep now in the, in the MSL. Um, I was working on my keeping to keep. And yeah. then obviously Dunkey took the gloves, what, which was fine with me. Um, and then I kept a couple of games in the, the Momentum One Day Cup where, where Kessila got in, injured. So, and I, I, I loved it. Um, but at the moment at the Warriors, there's like four or five keepers. So, you know, I think I'll keep, keep training it and you know you never know where you know these t20 leagues opening batsmen that can keep a uh, backup keep is vital um so i i don't think it's a attribute attribute that i've thrown away it's something i want to work on um and i think yeah it's it's going to be an interesting year coming up because i'd love to to carry on keeping yeah and i guess it's, it's one of those right you'd rather have kind of more 
attributes towards your name rather than just being a, a batter alone. Although you can obviously do it and you prove that you've you know you've got into teams based purely on your batting. But I guess just having that extra attribute is just always a bit handy, you know, just for kind of selectors, coaches, all that kind of thing. Yeah, and then just quickly to finish, boy. Um, obviously, you know, you've you've inspired a lot of people, and I'm sure you know just looking at Gray High School alone, a lot of people look up to you, a lot of younger people. Is there anything? I know we've talked about giving advice to younger young cricketers, but is there any kind of pure kind of um, things that you want to advise them on? So just uh, specifics, yeah. like in terms of mental side of the game, and then also just uh, maybe even talking about the physical side of the game. So keeping yourself physically fit and all that kind of stuff. You know, what would you kind of advise for any young cricketers looking to go the route that you've gone down to to play the SNN19 level, to get a franchise contract, and hopefully to to represent the Proteas one day? I think. There's definitely one thing with regards to the mentality of, of things, um, and that is just to be yourself. I know it sounds cliche and stuff, but when you when you're going on the rise and you're getting a lot of advice from people that you could be this person, you you bat like this, so bat like that, um, that can cloud your judgment. Um, so do what makes you good, what makes you tick. I think that's anything in life. Do what makes you special because I think s social media and and all that plays a role today where you want to be like other people, you want to play shots like other people, but unfortunately that doesn't work. You know, it's, it's about what you can bring to the table. And I think when you start being yourself and, and playing the way you want to play, that's when you're going to be the most successful you can be. And then with regards to exercise, um, obviously my brother's into, into strength and conditioning. So he's, he's helped me a lot with that. Um, quite explosive stuff. I do a lot of boxing, um, running and stuff so yeah I think the most important thing with with being a professional cricketer is having time on your legs so getting your legs strong I think is is really important spending days out on the field um, you need strong legs so I think if if that's one thing I can give it's it's to have strong legs and a strong core okay no awesome bro that's uh yeah great advice for for young cricketers coming through and um you know, yeah, I just want to say thank you for obviously coming aboard today. It's been awesome. I'm going to save this video for people to watch back. But um, yeah, keep going with it, brother. Like, you know, you obviously, you're a couple of steps away and, and then, you know, you'll be you'll be there with uh, Quinny de Kaka at the top of the order, you know, smashing it out and hopefully winning a few World Cups for us. I mean, how good would that be? Yeah, that would be the ultimate dream. Bro, it'll be next level. I hope so. And uh, I just want to say thanks for having me on, on, on board and... Um... Yeah, I, I love what you're doing with your cricket videos. And anyone who's watching, guys, please go follow this guy. He's, he's posting some really good content. Um, so, yeah, thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Cheers, brother, 100%. Uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch, boy. But um, enjoy yeah, the rest of uh, isolation. Hope uh, South Africa turns it around soon. And, um, yeah, all the best, brother. Thanks, bro. Cheers, bro. Cheers, boy. Cheers.